Welcome to Last Week in Gaming, folks. I had to take a little pause last week because of travel, but I'm back in better, in better shape than ever, except for not really, and the fact that I've been fighting one of those super cults from cult places where viruses are like Game of Thrones characters that are constantly fighting about who will be king of the nose and use snot walkers to fight off the mother boogers and all that. It's a battle for the ages all up in here, and I am so done with it. Just find the rightful heir already and be done with it, okay? Anyways, news has been dropping all week long and a bombshell just hit yesterday, so without further ado, here are our main stories. In a shocking announcement made yesterday, we found out Sony is officially skipping E3 next year. That's right. For the first time in 24 years, Sony won't have a presence at the world's biggest gaming trade show. In their statement, Sony said, PlayStation fans mean the world to us and we always want to innovate, think differently, and experiment with new ways to delight gamers. As a result, we have decided not to participate in E3 in 2019. We are exploring new and familiar ways to engage our community in 2019 and can't wait to share our plans with you. It's important to note that this is not the first publisher to back out of E3. Over the years, Electronic Arts, Microsoft, or even Nintendo have had varied press events held separate from the show, so Sony's move is in line with that trend that we've been seeing. As for how people have been reacting to the news, most folks are pretty divided about whether or not this is a really big upset. But with the success of Sony's annual event, PSX, and fans gearing up for the PlayStation 5, it seems this move makes sense for Sony and most of you for the most part, agree. Sony's at the top of their game, and now they get to control their messaging even further. That isn't to say pressure isn't on them. With the spotlight put on by this news alone, they now have no choice but to deliver on their announcements at either PSX or wherever or however they choose to hold press events going forward. Either way, I'm excited to see what this means for Sony and the future consoles. Microsoft is still making big, however, different moves to compete with Sony, but we'll get to more on that later. Now, not so exciting is where this leaves E3. I've attended the trade show eight times, and while I felt a slight shift happening last year, 2019 will definitely have a markable void. For the industry folks and the public, this is a big change. Anyway, we'll see how this all shakes out in the summer, like we always do. Now on to another story, I'd bet a Nuka-Cola that many of you have been spending time in the wasteland with Fallout 76. Yes? No? In any case, those that are playing, I'm pleased to see that all of you are being ladies and gentlemen out there among the mutants and scorched beasts. The Verge reports beta veterans like YouTuber Many a True Nerd and Reddit user OmniPsycho are assisting Fallout 76 newcomers with free weapons and armor as well as building friendly camps. Now obviously the game just came out, but still, it's nice to see people playing nice in an online game. In a game barren of NPCs, this world solution seems to be bringing some peace of mind to those who feel somewhat lost and alone out there in West Virginia. Have you been playing? What's your first takeaway from it? Would love to know if you can go ahead and leave a comment. Would ya? Do it. The launch of Glider Redeploy happening fairly recently in Fortnite, allowing people to sail away from build battles and jump off mountains without fear. If you remember, I laughed in the face of fall damage at the time. Well, silly me, because the mechanic is flying away from the core place that's in the crazy popular Battle Royale game. Epic wrote a blog post about the decision saying, two weeks ago, we began our glider redeploy tests in default modes. We did not live up to expectations of quickly iterating on the mechanic and communicating plans. We are disabling glider redeploy in all default modes. Get ready to press F to pay respects to all the people who are now being eliminated due to fall damage. You flew, I mean built, too close to the sun. Just like, way too close. Happy, happy birthday to PlayStation 4. This system turned five years old this week, and Sony is celebrating with some fun statistics. For instance, over 86 freaking million PS4s have been sold worldwide now, which is most impressive. And the top five best-selling games of the system are Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Call of Duty World War II, FIFA 17, FIFA 18, and Grand Theft Auto 5. So scientifically speaking, that means you all love your pew pews and your kick kicks. I'm a baby. Speaking of PS4, Death by Frying Pan is coming to the console. No, I'm not talking about a bad indie band title that's a terrible name. I'm talking about PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, or as you guys know it, PUBG. That's right, the Battle Royale game is finally making its way to Sony's system on December 7th, basically a year after it arrived on Xbox One. It started on PC, of course. Now, if you pre-order the game on PS4, you can look forward to dressing up your little murder person as Nathan Drake, which, let's be honest, is pretty fitting since he kills countless people in Uncharted. 
like loads of people. Just so much people. Sticking to super cool stuff coming to PS4, man, is Sony having a bang up week this week? Spider-Man's next DLC called Turf Wars is set to superhero land on the system November 20th. This time our boy Peter Parker has his web shooting hands full with Hammerhead, but hey, to help him out, Insomniac has three new suits for the webhead, Spider Armor Mark I, Iron Spider Armor, and Spider Clan. My favorite, you ask? Well, I gotta go with the Spider Armor Mark I, Obvi. I'm a goth at heart and I thrive in the absence of light. It might be sneaking up on you, but the fifth year after the year of Luigi is almost over, and you know what that means. Game of the year time, baby. In fact, the Game Awards announced the six nominees for the best of the best. They are Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Celeste, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Monster Hunter World, and Red Dead Redemption 2. I mean, Red Dead is most definitely the likely favorite, but it's rad to see Celeste getting some love here. Though I'm curious, what game do you think was overlooked here for game of the year? Be sure to let me know in the comments, and if you want to see all the other wonderful nominees and to vote for who you think should win, head to thegameawards.com. Apparently Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales hasn't had runaway success. Maybe CD Projekt Red needs to whistle for Roach to get up to speed. In all seriousness, Eurogamer noted that the studio's joint CEO, Adam Kaczynski, talked about the game's performance on a financial call recently. He said, the game appealed to the community, which drove up our expectations regarding sales. Unfortunately, as yet, these expectations have not been fulfilled. Still, we remain optimistic. We expect to continue to sell Thronebreaker for many years to come, even though the initial period may not have lived up to our initial expectations. I feel like this happens every year during this busy, busy holiday season. Games get lost in the mix. I'm thinking of you, Titanfall 2. Don't hold your breath for a Nintendo 64 classic anytime soon. In an interview with Kotaku, Nintendo of America President Reggie fils commented directly about the possibilities of the retro mini system. He stated, I would not ever rule something out, but what I can tell you is certainly that's not in our planning horizon. You know, I'm cool with this if we uh, can get some 64 games with a Switch Online subscription. Make it happen, Nintendo. Technically, this happened at the end of last week, but since time is an illusion, it's worth mentioning that Microsoft is bringing two new studios under its umbrella. First up is Fallout New Vegas and Pillars of Eternity developer Obsidian Entertainment, which was heavily rumored and we talked about last week. As such, the second acquisition is more surprising as Microsoft is also adding Wasteland 2 and Bard's Tale 4 Studio in Exile Entertainment. So all of a sudden, Xbox's first party has added a ton of skill points in the RPG department. <laughs> Me likey. Before we go off to be our very best this weekend, we gotta talk about that Detective Pikachu trailer, right? I mean, if you told me five years ago that a movie with realistic Pokemon and Ryan Reynolds voicing Pikachu was hitting the silver screen, I would have called you crazy. But here we are, and honestly, it looks pretty darn good. Sign me up to see it, even if that Mr. Mime is terrifying. And furry Jigglypuff? Not what I would have gone with, but then again, what's the alternative? Furless? Yikes. And that's it for this week, folks. Hope I can return next week feeling and sounding much better. I'm so sorry for being sick. Hopefully this cold blows over soon. If you like today's show, please show it with a sub, a like, or a comment. Now the holiday season is upon us here in America, and Thanksgiving is next week, which means in order to give everyone their well-deserved time off, including me, next week's episode will air on Thursday instead of Friday. So set a reminder in your phone for Thursday at noon not to miss the premiere should be a good one. And that reminds me, if you wanna be notified every time I post a video, you can hit that notification bell looking button down below to get that squared away and never miss an episode. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.